Okay, wonderful people. Um, this will be the use of English in another time, but for now, I'll be taking literature in English. My name is Thierry Mays, my Michaels, and of course, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you need to be there right now. Um, a lot of material has been on that platform. So on YouTube, just search out the words uh, Isaac Humanitarian Foundation. And I hope that um, you get something worth right from there. Alright, so to the class today, for the purpose of Wayek, we're going to be touching one of the poems uh, written by Kofi Awuno. He's a very popular writer and a poet. And of course, to be much more candid, um, this is a poem that has featured severally in your work exams. So um, I know you are familiar with them. This, this should serve as a form of revision. At the same time, it should serve as a form of um, trying to get into details of what it truly is about. So this is, um, I'm going to be writing a poem on the board. You can follow, if you have a book with you right there, fine, you can follow along. Um, see that we will have something to treat. Alright, so plot summary and thematic analysis of the anvil and the armor by Kofi Awuno. Okay, so um, quickly, the poem starts by saying thoughts between the anvil and the armor. In the forging hours of a new life, in the forging hours of a new life. Are we together? Transforming the pants. Transforming the pants that delivered me. We together in the joys, in the joys of new songs, the trappings, the trapping of the past, tender and tenuous. Okay, woven with the fiber of Caesar and washed in the blood of the goods in the fetish art, washed in the blood of the goods in the Fetish hot. Okay? Are laced with flimsy glories of paved streets. Okay? The jargon of the new dialectic is understand. The jargon of a new dialect. Okay? Comes. Comes with the charisma. Of the perpetual. Petrol search, search on the outlaw's ill. Now look at these closing lines. So the old days for us. So the old days. Okay? For us. Our fathers. That we may wear them under our new garments. That we may wear. 
came there. Under our new garment. Okay? After we have washed ourselves, after we have washed ourselves in the wild pool, the wild pool of many rivers, estuaries. Okay, this is three. We hear the songs. We hear their songs and rumors every day. The timing to ignore these we use. Timing to ignore this, we use a bit snatches from their tunes. Tongue. 
You used to hold it by the base, and then you put it in the fire. You leave it to heat to a certain degree. Then it's already looking weak. You bring it out, you can see the metal looking very red. Then you place it on top of this anvil. The anvil is a very thick iron, very thick, it looks like a rock. Then you place that small metal on top. Then you, you use this armor to bend it. Then it makes sound. Then you keep hearing sounds like that. Okay, that's what I'm talking. And essentially, it returns or it forms the shape you are trying to bend it into. Now, the poet here is using that symbol. He's using a description of the blacksmith shop. A blacksmith is someone who bends iron, who converts iron into shape, into spoons, arrows, and all of those things. So he's using what is happening inside our room to describe what is happening to Africans. So he calls this anvil. This one is the African culture. This hammer is the European, the European culture. Okay? The metal that you are trying to bend itself is the African child. So this African child is now caught between, the anvil is under, this armor is on top, the African child is in between. Western culture is smashing the head of the African child. Down, down, underneath, the African culture is pushing him and talking him up. At the end of the day, you will have a new shape. The child will not be totally African again. Something else has happened to him. He has gone through the process of refining. That is why you see the point starting by saying what? Caught between the anvil and the armor. In the forging house of a new life, if you have been to the forge, that's the place where they change the shape of iron. This one is much more imagistic. It's trying to paint an image of a house in your head. That okay, the house where they forge something, where you change something, the shape is talking about the mind. That is why you see an African child wakes up early in the morning. Normally, his own culture is that when you wake up, you must prostrate to give to your father. But because he traveled to America and then he came back after six months, you see him return a car to the back, snap back, you wake up in the morning, you bounce, yo dad, what's up dad? What's up dad? Are you? That's the new child. Okay? But his name has not yet changed. The food he eats has not yet changed. He is now a mixed human being because he has been what? Forged in the house of a what? A new life. So to proceed with the point, let me just read through, then I make a long explanation. Caught between the anvil and the armor in the forging house of a new life, transforming the pants that delivered me in the joys of new song. Hello, is someone there? When we are talking about pants, we are talking about the pain that a mother feels when she is to be delivered of what? A baby. You see that pain, medically, has been described as about 420 bones in your body, breaking or cracking at the same time. That is the kind of pain that comes out of a woman when she's giving birth. So the author is doing what we call allusion. Allusion means going into a particular field to bring a word, to explain what you want to say now so that the meaning can be deeper. So he's converting the feeling of the African child when he wants to change from his culture to a Western person. It's too much pain. How can you just abandon your culture? The, the process of getting to becoming a white man in black skin is too painful. So it describes it as well, transforming the pants that delivered me into the joys of new song. But when that child is eventually transformed, you see the guy will be telling you, man, am I the African the man? I love the Western ways. And then you say, what are you saying? You read in your own language. Speak your Yoruba and you say, no, no, I don't like that. But I want to eat Eba. You don't like that, but you pronounce Eba. So it's, it's too much in the head of that child. And then in the next stanza it says, The trappings of the past, tender and tenuous, woven with the fiber of Caesar, and washed the blood of the goats in the fetish of, and laced with flimsy glories of what? Pink Street. What that part is saying is that now that child, who early in the morning will take a uh, pot and go to the street to fetch water, has now seen that there is a tap. That guy that will wear his kumba and shogutu, and then he will walk without shoes as now seen that there's Balenciaga. He now knows that there's a Tommy jeans. You get. He now knows 
the, the child that will sit at home and learn how to dance cultural dance. He is now singing trap music. Trap is nothing. What's that? So really, it's telling us that the African culture, ah, don't extend that, but it's telling us it's too stressful. You eat, you eat with your hand. We're supposed to eat with spoon. Ah, it's, it's too somehow. Well, I love it though. It has a sweet part, but it's tenuous. Woven with the fiber of Caesar, meaning that that part of the culture where you need to, you need to be traditional, where you carry out uh, what you call them, uh, all these sacrifices. That's what you see here saying, washed in the blood of the goat in the fetish heart. Are we together? He's trying to describe the African culture, that the African culture. You see it, and even our clothes, it's like your weaving material. Our culture, our behavior, our activities are, are too ritualistic. Do you get? They have been laced with glories of paved streets. It means that now the guy has gone to streets that are being paved. When we say paved streets, it means interlocking on the ground. And it's places like London and Co. you can see that. So that's a sign of advancement. Do you get that? So that child that is first transformed in his mind, we are now seeing what happens. His former culture has now been transformed with the fleecy glory of what Pink Street. Now, the jargon of a new dialect comes with the charisma of the perpetual search on the outlaws game. So the old days for us, our fathers, that we may wear them under a new garment, after we have washed ourselves in the world full of what? Rivers estuary. Meaning the what? The altar or the poetic persona is Calling out to his forefathers, saying, Please, so the old days for us, the old days are our old culture and tradition that we have bastardized. Help us use middle and thread of wisdom, the middle and thread of, uh, of the aged to sow those old days. We know that our children have already gone out to the world, there's nothing we can do again. Teach us how to teach them that even though they are going to the advanced countries, they should see that their own values are also lovely. That is why I respect someone like Whiskey. You see Whiskey, as advanced as he is, okay, as exposed as he is, he keeps on raising the flag of the African culture. If he sings a song that is international standard, you see the clothes he wears inside, he wears Ankara, eh? he wears this Ghana clothes, he put African beat to make him know that he is African. So that is what the poet is saying here. So the old days for us, our fathers, that we may wear them under our new garment. The new garment is now the new culture. So that you wear your old tradition under it. You know the roots where you're from. And when you're taking in the new culture, it does not overshadow you. Okay? After we have washed ourselves in the wild pool of many rivers, that's after we have traveled to many countries, you know, through the sea, over the seas. Now, in our sense, we hear their songs and rumors every day. They turn it to ignore these, we snatch, we use snatches from their tunes. Meaning that you hear what your forefathers have been shouting. Probably one person will wake up and say, ah, this culture is bad. Follow your own culture. You hear the, the tune every day, you hear the rumors of it. And you hear what is happening in the foreign countries also. So you decide to pick small from the, the, the African culture and pick little from the Western culture and you combine it. So you are now a totally new kind of human being. You are not Western, you are not African, you are like an African classic. Do you get it? So, he's saying, we hear their songs and rumors every day. They tell me to ignore this. We use snatches from their old tunes to make for ourselves new flags and antics. While they leave the banner of the land and listen to the reverberation of their songs in the splash moon of the sea. Amen? Amen, George Abbey. Okay, but really, the, the essence of this is just to awaken in you. Those of you who feel that the African culture is rubbish, some of you they give you swallow. That's the one you go swallow a mala. You say you don't want to eat it. You both call it the bagare. Gare. And I like the way it sounds. Gare. Yes. You know, get into a, a new woman's shop where they sell food and you say you want to buy a bar. You don't really have to like this. Okay, so but all of these are our cultural heritage. You make your hair, you make it weaved, you put on the beat, the African beat. Those are the things we can modernize. Imagine using the Ankara to sew your suit. Imagine using the Ankara to sew your school bag. Imagine the school where the school uniform is Ankara design. 
Okay? Imagine a community where everyone wears that and crowd. You will see that in no time, even the people from the Western world will come to see what is happening. They want to be a part of it, the way we are rushing to go back to them. So, the clarion call has come to you and I. Even I, who am teaching, you can say I'm putting on the Western culture attire. I'm supposed to be putting on the native attire. Is that not so? But what is important is that the African heritage does not die on the inside. Okay, so I hope that um, on your exam, you're going to write something down.